there's a marvelous, uh, there's a marvelous line by D.H. Lawrence where he says, uh, who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? It is someone come to do me harm. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? It is someone come to do me harm. No, no. It is the three strange angels. Admit them. Admit them. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? It is someone come to do me harm. Then he catches himself. He says, no, no. It is the three strange angels. Admit them. Admit them. I suppose this wondrous trinity that uh, Lawrence is encountering here is the, uh, the aspect of invitation that is constantly being um, um, held out to us from life and often from our own art, if we are artists, into a kind of obliteration of everything you've known about yourself already. And you really, your artistic integrity, I feel, and certainly uh, Jerry has passed through the fire of this, uh, of this uh, integrity and this initiation. Your artistic integrity has to do with your willingness to leave your old uh, shadowed smaller house behind and uh, step out into that uh, great unknown. And that it takes a kind of courage and faith. And the faith is not necessarily the, the, the knowledge that, yes, the cycles come round, I'm in the period now of darkness, and the light will come in the morning. I think actually that faith has to do with learning to love the darkness and learning to love the entrance into whatever aspect of day or night you are actually asked to inhabit and, and uh, create a companionship with. I have a piece I, I wrote called uh, Faith and it was written when I had very little faith at all. I remember writing the title down at the top of the page. There it was, Faith. and. Uh, an empty page beneath it. So I started uh, just by getting my foot in the door by saying, uh, I want to write about faith. I want to write about faith. In, there's a marvelous line by Keats actually where he said, uh, he said, one, of the he said one of the greatest things uh, I feel in the whole uh, kind of Western poetic tradition and perhaps in the whole Western artistic tradition when he said, uh, I am certain of nothing but the holiness of the heart's affections and the truth of the imagination. I am certain of nothing but the holiness of the heart's affections and the truth of the imagination. I am certain of nothing but the holiness of the heart's affections and the truth of the imagination. When Keats spoke about the truth of the imagination, he was not thinking, he was not, he was not saying that uh, imagination is the ability to think up new things. He was actually saying there's an inbuilt faculty inside each of us, uh, an inbuilt faith you can have in the images in your own heart and mind and body which are coming alive uh, every day in response to the incredibly complicated creation which is around you at any one time. When you think of all the thousands of images and uh, creatures and houses and societies and, and uh, the multiplicity of images that a human being is faced with every day, um, you'd think it would, if you, if you really thought about everything we had to handle just from morning until night, you'd think in a logical way that it would overwhelm every human being. But Keats says there's actually a faculty inside each person whereby they're able to form an image inside themselves, a single image, which will make sense of all the thousands of images that you are confronted with and sometimes besieged with every day. And that this image is not only uh, an answer uh, an, uh, to, to how you will actually deal with all these different aspects, it's more actually truly a way of being in the world. And the discipline of your writing or your painting or your sculpting is your faithfulness to that internal image which is emerging in response to the, to the world of which you are a part. And it seems to me uh, that Jerry you know, showed an incredible kind of courage 
in following an image which, to begin with, actually exiled him from his discipline and exiled him from his inheritance and cast him, in a way, out into the dark. But if you actually look into the, into the artistic traditions, uh, you'll see that this is actually, uh, this is actually a well-known motif. If you take uh, Dante's Commedia, for instance, it begins with the words in medieval Italian where Dante says, Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi retrovai per una selva oscura. Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi retrovai per una selva oscura. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in the dark wood where the true way was wholly lost. In the middle of the road of my life, I awoke in a dark wood where the true way was wholly lost. It's interesting that Dante would begin in this place. He's about to begin one of the great uh, epics of Western literature. It was called the Commedia. That was the title he gave to it, but it was so good that it later became known as the Divine Comedy. You know when you've written something decent, when people start calling it the Divine, whatever it is. And, and Dante had actually written uh, something that would last for centuries. But he didn't begin by saying, this is what I know and I'm going to tell you it. He began by waking in that wood, lost to the world and actually lost to himself. And in actual fact, uh, what he's really speaking to is the wisdom of allowing yourself to be lost in the world. Because when you think about it, if you've ever been lost on a mountainside or on the ocean or out in the woods, there's a particular kind of attentiveness and a particularly scintillating way in which you look at the world which you would not have if you thought you knew where you were. And if you're in a blizzard on a mountainside and your life is at stake, then you are looking at everything as a clue as to how you might survive. Well, truly, you know, the artist, when they step into this exile, into this darkness, you're stepping into a place of being lost where you actually feel as if your life is at stake in both senses of the word, both you could die, uh, literally, or you could actually live in a different kind of way. And so your senses are alive to every moment and everything that comes your way. Everything is a gift, and there's a giftedness uh, to, the, um, to the essence of almost everything you see. And it seemed to me... In Oh